Hey there. Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you've had a nice little holiday break or something there. All right, let me go share my screen. So this is a little shorter, but as to be expected, uh, not many things coming up. And we got a small little cluster from Germany, actually, from uh, Martin Livesey went out there. Um, anyway, uh, let's move right in. This is January. All right, Ben sent this in. He was wondering if he found some oyster mushrooms. And I told him, well, um, not particularly. They, they can be called mock oysters. Uh, looking a little bit closer, you'll see they've got some kind of fuzzy edges. Uh, the color's not quite right. It's much oranger than you would see in your typical oyster mushrooms. Even the gills are orange. Like sometimes the oysters, you'll have a, like a dark brown top, but not really these yellows and oranges. And even if you do have some color on the top, because they do have some yellow oysters, uh, the gills tend to be white. Um, so anyway, if he would have given this one a whiff, he might have got kind of a stink of some coal tar or kind of sulfury. I believe this is uh, Philatopsis nigilans. They call it the orange mock oyster. And like I said, it can kind of smell coal tar. It's pretty funky. All right. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, so Adele O'Dowd sent this in, um, uh, and I believe she submitted them to INAT as well, which I think is where I got the pictures from this. Uh, you can see her pooch is checking them out right there. She said it was on an old elm stump that was cut a few years ago. Um, and you can see looking close, it's got kind of dark cap, lighter gills. Uh, one of the classic things you see right here is it's going brown on the stipe and kind of fuzzy. Um, that's pretty typical of flamulina. So I put uh, flamulina volutipes on this guy, uh, velvet foot, or you would know them as enokis in the grocery store. Uh, they look very different because the way they cultivate them, they change the CO2. And so they grow long stems reaching kind of like they're behind a piece of bark. Um, anyway. Uh, Marilyn Mandel found these guys. I believe this is some uh, Exidia, um, Recisa, I believe. Um, kind of like weird little just brown jelly things. I'm sure you get, you should be recognizing this by now. Um, one thing, so this is your lion's name. So this is Horatian Arenaceus. One cool thing was if you look down here, she's even got a spore print from the lion's mane, which was pretty cool. And she said this was the first time she'd found this guy. Uh, and she's indicating this white one here. And it does look like um, Tremella fusiformis, the snow fun fungus. Uh, there's some other ones that are kind of similar. Usually they're not as translucent as this. Um, and we got a couple of bonuses in here. We, look, so we got a hypoxalon. This is a little ascomycete. And then you've got this sterium here. This is probably sterium complicatum. Of course, you got this lichen, but I'm not too good at putting names. That is actually another lichen. So there's all kinds of stuff happening here. Um, some tremella actually is feeding off of the mycelium of the sterium. I'm not sure if this one does that particularly, but that may be the case. And that may, may be why we're seeing that sterium on there. Or I guess it would be the jelly fungus because it's the one eating the sterium. Anyway, uh, so Martin Livesey uh, sent this one in. Uh, so you may have heard people mention fiber caps. Um, so I believe this is an inosibi. Inosibi are one of the fiber caps. They tend to have brownish spores um, and oftentimes have strange aromas. Um, I put, uh, which... When I was Googling it, I found out apparently they've changed the name and it's Pseudosperma rismosum. Um, at least I think that's what this one was. Uh, I so. totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, these were a couple of, well, I especially like this one on the left. We've had this a few times. This looks like Scleroderma polyrhizum, uh, kind of grows partially buried. Um, big gnarly thing with a thick skin and it uh, has a black if you find it and it's fresh you cut it, it's black just like your scleroderma 
um, that you you know find in the woods, pink skin, poison puffball. Um, this one here, you can see it's kind of got this bell-shaped cap with the kind of fleshy stipe. Uh, it's looking like a Mycena, if you come to familiar familiarize yourself with those. But it's got this very distinct yellow stipe. So I believe this is Mycena epipterygia, um, the yellow leg bonnet. And um, I think there's one that's similar to this but its cap is a bit different and it might have more greenish tones because I was thinking that this one might be the mouse pea, <laughs> Mycena. Uh, but I think that one looks a little different. So um, there are some that kind of have some yellow coloration. If you smell them, it smells like a mouse gauge. And he, these tended to have a pretty good year this year. Uh, so we've had them in the presentation in the past and you may have seen them out in the woods. Um, Classic rusty spore print here, caught on the uh, the ring. Uh, orange cap, pretty large, meaty mushroom. Looks like there might even be a little bit of greenish coloration here from the bruising, which would indicate it has active compounds. This is Gymnopolis. I'm saying Junonius. Uh, there are a couple. Uh, anyway, this is probably big laughing gem. If you, if you do find these, these are usually, you're only found in the fall. But if you do find them and you haven't found them yet, give them a nice smell. They smell really nice on the gills. All right. And fortunately, he gave me a suggestion for this one because I don't know if I would have got to this conclusion. But um, Martin went out to the Black Forest in Germany, fortunate for him. And he found this guy, which he was calling a uh, Leucopaxillus. Um, I googled it and I didn't want to put a species name um, because I'm not familiar enough with this to to really call something specifically. Um, he also found this lovely mushroom and you may recognize it. Uh, we were finding some of these or at least something similar to this in the woods in the fall. Uh, purple coloration, um, typically not as striated like as this. Um, these have a bit deeper indentation on the gill connection as well. Um, this is Lepista sord sordida. Um, they call it the sordid bluet. I don't know why they it, they're giving it such a bad <laughs> name. Uh, you know, sordid is kind of like disrespected in a way. But anyway, um, this is a, just a different type of bluet. And this is your classic, which. We don't really have this uh, variety in our area, your Amanita muscaria or the fly agaric. It's beautiful. And uh, Milton actually found this guy, and I was unable to put an ID on this. Annie, if you want to chime in, um, I was thinking, what do they have? The, that one, the sheath wood tough, it kind of looked gallarina -y, but I don't think that's what it is. It's growing in the soil, not really from the wood. Um, it's kind of small and hard to put a, you know, a name on being this young. Um, but anyway, anybody have any suggestions? No spore print either. Apparently he was um, planting trees and I believe this was actually in the pot of the tree itself, not something that he was putting putting in. There's some kind of, um, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but there is a, some kind of foliota that I saw that looked kind of like that, but yeah. not, I can't I'll look it up. I'll see if I can think of the name. I don't know. Yeah, I was wondering if it was like a little foliota as well. But anyway, you can't always put your name, we could call this an LBM, a little brown mushroom. <laughs> And uh, anyway, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Kerry Raditz was out in the West Coast and got himself some nice hearty chanterelles. So some people are able to pick some mushrooms to eat around the holidays. Anyway, thanks. Take care.